Hey guys, it's Mei Mei. Welcome in. Today, we are either going to prove a point or disprove a point. You get to decide. Now, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, and I know a lot of you guys are new, so you might not have heard this, I'm a person that considers this a solid. Yes, I know. It feels like a solid to me. This and also the gingham, the tone-on-tone -tone ginghams, I use them where I would use solid color papers. So I want to show you why and how. Now, this side is not solid. This side is the two tones, and I can see that it is clearly two different shades, but this side I use as a solid. Now we all know this is a solid, but I'm going to show you today using patterns where you would solids and how it can really jazz up your card. So let's get started. So we're going to make two mini slimline cards that look exactly the same, but we're going to step it up. So we're just going to start right here. So I want to show you what I've done. We're going to call this the blue sky of my card. We're building a little tiny scene. Okay. So blue sky. I know this one feels very gray on camera, but it is a blue in real life. It's just kind of washed out because of the one next to it. Then I have a solid green. I'm going to place that green. That's going to be my ground, right? Then I have a solid green. <laughs> For me, I call this a solid. It's tone on tone. Again, not a solid. I'm using this as a solid. I'm going to place it down here. Now, these both came out of the same pack. You can see they're the same kind of pattern, and that works really well. Now, let me show you this. For just for fun, I thought we would look at a sun. This is sort of a sun. Here's a solid color sun, and here is a pattern sun. Now, it is not a solid color because it's the two tones, right? And if I flip this over, this is clearly a plaid. You see, I know the difference, but look at the interest I get or the texture or the movement I get with the patterns versus what I get here with my solids, right? Do you see that? Let's bring over our little focal point. I did one of these little guys, and here's what's so interesting to me. These guys are colored exactly the same color. As a matter of fact, because they don't look like it on here, let me show you. They are exactly the same. I just colored them myself, exact same markers in the exact same places. And now look when you put them down here, how they kind of change. Here, he pops out really, really hard, and it's a little bit harsh to me. Now, remember, you may love this side, and that's perfectly fine because art is subjective. It's what you love. But here, to me, he becomes part of the scene, all of that movement in the background. So you could technically stop here, but let's step these cards up another step, and let me show you how to even more work with textures and different things. So let's move these guys off to the side. And now what I'm going to do, I'll leave that over here, I'm going to first add an actual sort of texture. I'm going to go to a punch. Now, on this solid card, you definitely need to do this. This is going to make all the difference in the world. You add something like this, and it's going to feel like grass where the little bear is standing. This will change the look of the card. I'm doing that off to the side so that the, the little thingy doesn't fly where I'm punching. There we go. So, see this? Huge difference, right? How did that instantly turn that ground into ground? Do you see that? It's just by playing with movement and texture, right? And look, now he stands on that little ground and it's super, super cute. All right, let's do the same thing here. You can keep adding with your textures and your layers and I just think it's incredible. I think it changes the look of things so much. Punch that there, apparently. Oh, I've got the little thing on the back so it's not punching onto my work surface. Flip that around and get this side cut. But I am a person who thinks, why use a solid, an actual solid, when I can use something like this and add even more interest? Just kind of play with the eye. Does that make sense? Still super cute. Let's lay our little guy down. Still, Just still adorable. I would want to move him where I could see the scallop a little bit, so I'd tuck him down a little bit. But look, doesn't that add just a little bit of something? Let's keep going. All right, so... I feel like these are a little flat, right? And I want to give them some dimension, some life. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to ink. I'm going to use my favorite vintage photo. I love vintage photo distress ink. I will tell you, this is a brand new juicy pad. So it gets a little bit heavy when I'm using it, but I love it. Let me ink this side first. This side already has movement and texture. So you really think this won't do much, but watch what it does. And I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not very good at this actually. So I'm just picking this up and inking. That is a light coat. Let's go a little heavier than that so we can really see it on camera. And then around the sides. What this does is it builds dimension. It builds depth in your cards. If you're a person who feels like your cards just kind of are flat a lot of the times, like you just can't get that feel where the card pops off the page or your whatever you're building doesn't pop off, try this. 
What this does is it builds shape in that flat piece. I'm gonna do it here as well so you can see it on the background. And you can obviously sit this down and do like a blending motion. You know, you can do that circular blending motion if you want to. I just do this a lot of times. And I don't mind it looking a little tattered because I feel like doing this is kind of adding that kind of um, distress look to it anyway. Just going to run around. Now, I'll tell you something. You're thinking, you're going to cover that bottom up anyway, so why spend the time? I have found that it's just as quick for me to go ahead and do it. And then I don't have to worry about have I done enough up the side for my grass. Does that make sense? Then I know I have it done and I just go ahead and do it. All right. Not my best inking job, but look at the difference. Now, can you see how that really has that depth that almost feels like it's curved? And then when we lay our grass on it, and that's with the texture. Now, as much as it changed here, wait till you see this. I'm going to ink it just like I did this one and we'll get right back together. Now, do you see all that movement that it created? Now, full disclosure, I did these much heavier than I normally would. I wanted you to really be able to see it. So they're a little bit dark and a little bit ruddy looking, but much heavier than usual. Same thing with the suns. I'm going to do those and you'll be able to see that it just creates absolute dimension, gives something to the page. This is the kind of stuff you guys are always asking me. You'll say something like, why do my cards not look very like professional? Although we're not looking for professional, we want homemade cards, right? But you'll say to me, why do my cards just kind of, they're kind of flat. If they feel flat to you, try these kinds of tricks. Try using patterns. Try using ink in places. Try getting some, some depth and some texture. Try using your embossing folders. Embossing folders really make a difference. Um, so look, now we have this different, isn't that cool how that changes things? I think it's super neat. So even though this is all solid paper, it still has some texture or some interest to it, right? Of course, I'm a big fan of this guy. All right, so let's glue this together. And I think what I'm gonna do, cause I'm gonna show you another step, another way. You just gotta keep going. You just step it up. The process is a step to the next cool thing. So I'm gonna glue this down here. And of course this is gonna go onto a card front, but we'll do that at the end. All right, and then place this one down. And then for these little guys, I think I want them to kind of hang off the page. So I think I'm gonna do them kind of hanging over like that and I'll trim off what's not touching. Does that make sense? I don't really need that whole circle, so we'll just do it like that. Slide this guy out and do the same thing. Do not need all of that. Let me get my scissors. Just cut that away there. And then here, that's another way to build dimension. Of course, I'm gonna to need to ink that now, so I'll get my little, because I did that. But that's another way to build dimension on your page is let your scene hang off the edge. Scenes, if you ever look at designer series papers, things that have patterns and things, they all hang off the edge. They don't go right to the edge and stop. Um, they always continue off. There's something about that that helps the eye travel around the page and creates more interest. All right, so we're all inked up and we're ready for our teddy bear. So let's bring him over. Now, another thing, I could glue him flat down just like this and he would look adorable. But look at the difference of the two. Aren't they cool? I love it. All right, I could glue him like that, but I'm not. I'm gonna pop him up. That adds another bit of dimension and texture. So I'm just gonna use some of these little guys. I use these little foam tapes sometimes. Sometimes I use my Scotty, which is my favorite. Um, Scotty is more expensive, maybe. I mean, by the time, Scotty though, it is expensive, it is an investment. Let me show you my Scotty. I haven't opened my new one yet. But this guy right here, he is an investment, but honestly, I get a year's worth of use out of him every time. And you guys know that if you've seen my birthdays on my Scotty's always right um, when I opened them. And the last two rolls I've gotten a year out of, and you gotta remember, I craft all the time. And everybody in my store and in my studio here all craft using that same Scotty. So you get a lot of use out of it. All right, so I'm going to drop this little guy down a little bit in the heel so that the little scallop will show. And let's do this guy the same way. So there's that. There's two cards that are extremely similar to, similar to each other, but they still feel slightly different because of the way one has texture and one is just the solid images. Now, again, you're going to like what you like, and there's no judgment there. Some of you are going to love this guy, and some of you are going to love these guys. So tell me in the comments, are you a pattern fan? Or are you a solid fan? Truth be told, I this one in person is super, super cute, but you're not seeing the blue. Let me see if I bring it up if it shows better. Oh, yeah. See how much bluer that is? So I love this one in person. Love it. All right, now how do we step this up again? Two things. You use a white pen. 
This is not the one I want. That's my souffle. This is the one I want. A white jelly roll, and 10 is my favorite, the number 10 one, or a black jelly roll, and this is an 08. So let's use the white over here. I'll use the black over here. The white will show up better. So let's just add some white lines. I like to do like a dot, dot, dash situation. I think that's really cute. You don't have to outline every single bit of the project. Back in the day, I used to, if I did any stitch lines, I used to do stitch lines. And if I did them, I thought I had to do every single thing, but you don't. This little bear, it'll change everything about him to just add, let me get that rolling a little bit because it dried up on me a tiny bit. If that happens, you can just use it on a piece of paper beside you or something to get it moving again, get your ink rolling. Dot, dot, dash on his little forehead there. Maybe a little dot, dot in his nose, right? On his little cheek. Something up here in his ear. Again, they don't have to match and be the same thing all over him. It's just cute to add this little interest around him. Definitely on his little belly down here. And see how it just changes him instantly? Same thing up here. Let's just add some white. Um, maybe down the side of the mailbox. Wherever you want to. You can add here. Dot, dot, dash dot, dot, dash, and any, just anywhere you add pattern or texture like this, it's going to add interest. Here, I'm even going to do them kind of scallop to kind of match the scallops up there. Anything you want with your white pen, just play. And I promise you, the more you add, the more you'll like it. All right. So let's do the same thing with the black and you'll see over here on the pattern how it looks. And it, it'll be very obvious. I'm going to move that because if I put my hand on it, I'm going to smear it. This will be much more obvious here because I'm using the black. But these pens are so great to just change the look of a card instantly. So while I'm doing this, I hope that you see what I'm talking about. The more you add, the more you do, the more texture, the more um, the more lines and drawing and little things you put here and there, the more you will see results from it. Now, I would use white pen on this bear, but I'm doing this so you can see the difference because I think white pen would show up better. But, especially in his nose, I'll probably do that anyway. But just a little bit here and there so you can see it. I'll do a little bit here. But I just think the more we add, the more little textures, the more little movement on the card, the more it looks like something that somebody would be like, wow, I would have never thought of using those colors. I would have never thought of using those patterns in that way. I just think it's adorable. All right, I wanted to show you one. So these would go on card, card bases. Let me show you. Let's bring over some card bases. So these would get glued down just like this. And then that white edge, I will tell you this, that white edge on that card frames what you did and changes everything, doesn't it? It's pretty cool. All right, I wanted to show you how to tell the color, like the dominant color of a pattern piece of paper. This is something I learned. This is the trick I told you I would show you. So let me get some paper. So for this piece of paper, it's pretty easy. Here's how I do it. Um, I used to watch on HGTV a gentleman named Christopher Lowell. He had the coolest champ, the coolest like um, home decor show. You've probably seen it if you've watched HG, HG, HGTV for any time. He would say, when you're working with a pattern and you want to know the dominant color, look at it and squint. Now this is easy because two colors are green. You know this is green dominant, right? But I'm going to challenge you to look at the screen on this one. If you look at the screen and squint, what color is dominant? Now, for, I'm not going to say what it is for me because I want you guys to say in the comments below. When you look at this, I'll even bring it up. When you look at this and you squint, what color is the dominant color? You might be surprised in this one. You might be surprised what it is. But that's how you find the dominant color of a piece of um, paper, of fabric, or whatever. When you squint, the color you see is the one that's dominant. So, again, this is really pushing it. Like, if I was looking for a pink, I probably wouldn't do this. I would probably find something like this that was too, was patterned in pink. Does that make sense? Just the same tones of pink. But you could work with this. You could use this kind of in the same way, especially florals. If you have a floral print paper and you squint, you can see what color is dominant. Don't know how that'll help you. It might help you. I don't know. I don't use that squint tip as much as I use the two-tone. This to me is green paper. It is not green polka dot. It is not green pattern. It is green paper. So I hope that these little cards that I showed you today will kind of explain that or kind of show that better. We always joke about it on the live show whenever I, when I get a new paper in and I'm showing it on the live show and Vince will go, is that a solid or a pattern? I do know the difference, but I just like the interest I get when I use these kind of two-tone um, patterns. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you do that too? I wish my blue was 
showing up better on camera. It makes me sad because it's so cute in person, but I wish you guys could see it better. But anyway, so if you like this kind of um, informative video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you like it. Also, subscribe. I love having all our new subscribers around. I appreciate it so much. And until next time, bye now.